and welcome back to my channel. Today I have more of a calming video for you to watch. It's been raining for a few days here in Texas and all I've wanted to do is paint with my watercolors. So in this video I've decided to paint little tiny landscapes um, and, and they're all from different seasons which is weird because I never planned it that way. It's just four little landscape photos and they match up with different seasons. So this one is a desert painting and it's really simple. There's nothing too complicated about it. It's something that you would see in Utah or Arizona and I am just enjoying getting to be a little creative with painting a desert. I decided to stray away from the cacti for this painting and instead I drew little green bushes in there just to give it that little pop of color that I felt like it needed. And then it has orange as the ground color and a bright bluish, purplish, pinkish sky. These watercolors are really fun to paint with because you can color the image so that you're not kind of guessing with a paintbrush and then just add some water to it. And then I'm able to mix more colors in with my watercolor set that I actually did my paintbrush into. So I hope you guys liked this one. This one was very fun for me. It wasn't too complicated and just messing around with the watercolor drying and then once it was dry I was able to paint over it again and make it more saturated in color. Also I really learned how to keep the paper from bending too much because I know if you add too much water to it it, to the actual paper it'll start to curl and by the end I think my last painting I did even better but knowing not to add so much water each each painting allowed the paper to stay straight now the good thing is is once it was dry I was kind of able to bend the paper back because they are so small and it didn't make a crease so here's the first one and now we're on to the second one for this painting, there is water involved with a little tiny wooden bridge as well as some mountains in the background and I felt like this is a good contrast to the very first painting that I did. I also wanted to have some green trees in there and make it kind of a foresty area. I went to New Mexico a few months ago and when we were there we were staying in a place just like this. and. It was gorgeous. You could see the mountains in the background and green forest trees all around you. I did want a little bit of a blue sky along with some clouds and I tried my best to put a reflection into the lake area so that you could see the clouds kind of popping through and I really am proud of how that turned out. I haven't really messed with reflections in a while unless it was acrylic paintings where you basically just smear left to right the color and there you go but in this one you actually had to imagine the clouds being the same shape in the water so I'm really proud of how it turned out and I think that my favorite part though besides the little lake area were the mountains in the background I kind of got to be a little carefree on these and I think they ended up a little darker than I intended however I'm not mad about it I think it actually looks good with the contrast I also liked adding the texture to this painting the texture with the little small brush that I was using was so much fun with the little dots everywhere and I ended up using that technique for the last painting that you'll see as well so we're almost to the end of this painting and I want to know what you guys do when you draw. Do you guys listen to an audiobook or do you have a TV show on in the background or just listen to music? Me personally, I like to listen to audiobooks, especially when they involve Harry Potter because I'm a Harry Potter fan. So this is what I was doing with this painting, listening to Harry Potter audiobooks. And now we're on to the third painting. This one was quite fun. I wanted to have a sunrise in the background. So I made the sky really bright yellow and orange and I added a few more forest trees in this one as well. I tried to show the depth in the mountains behind the grassy hill there, but it was kind of difficult because the watercolor wasn't drying as fast as I thought it would. So every time I would add paint, it would kind of smear or 
I don't know what it's called. It just, just kind of spread. So I grabbed my napkin as soon as I could and I just dabbed up the water, let that dry a little longer, and then I come back to the mountains later. Even though the very first painting was simple, I think this one was even more simple because I was already used to the small canvas at this point and with the same color scheme from the first painting and the second painting, I felt pretty confident on how to blend the colors. Here is where I come back to the mountains by adding more pink to the mountains, give it a little bit more rough fit texture, and then I started filling in the sky. So this one was really simple, not much to do in the painting, but I played with texture and contrast and I just really like how it turned out. So here it is, that's the final product of this one. Now on to the last painting. Fall is my favorite season out of the entire year. It's just wonderful to get nice little sweaters on and walk outside and see the beautiful colors and the leaves and just everything changes. The wind, the temperature, the the fact that there are pumpkin spice lattes available at Starbucks. Yes, that is going to be available on August 28th and I am thrilled even though I hate pumpkin, but I like pumpkin spice lattes. Is anybody here with me on this or is it just because just just me? I don't know. But anyway, today it was raining and I just felt like drawing a fall painting. If you guys would like a tutorial on fall leaves or just anything fall in general since it's the season is coming up, I can possibly gather something like that together. So let me know if that's something that you would want to learn about. In this painting, I used, of course, red, orange, yellow, green, brown. I even left some white on the trees to show a little contrast on those. And here is the textured part that I was talking about from the other painting. Just adding those little dots really, really helped this photo or painting pop. After I finished most of the leaves that were on the top, I went ahead and did the tree bark, just painting with water on top of the brown watercolor pencil, and then I filled in the road. Learning patience with these small canvases and trying to make the paper not bend in any way because you're limiting your water that you're using is pretty calming, I guess. You don't have to rush through anything and I love it. At the very end of the painting, I decided to add a little fence post on the left side because I felt like that space was pretty empty and it needed just something more for your eyes to look at. A few more touches with some leaves on the ground and we are finished with this painting. Here it is, the fourth and final painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had a blast painting these little two inch paintings. They're just so fun and I encourage you to try it. So if you liked this video, please give my video a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, we'd love to have you a part of my channel. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.